Hi, I'm Karen. We're here at Montevilla Sewing Center and we're going to talk about making buttonholes. I'm using the Janome 3160 and we can make a buttonhole by choosing, first of all, choosing buttonholes. So what I'm going to do is I'm moving the cursor over to the left and then I'm going to go up to five. That's five zero. Up here we have some information. So right here we're going to use foot R. That's this one right here. It has a little R right there. Take the regular foot off. We're going to put that away down in here where it's safe and sound. By the way, in your accessory tray you have actually a parking spot for your buttonhole foot right there like that. It fits nice and neat there. It has its own little spot. Okay, so when you put this on the machine, it actually can be put on backwards. So you want to make sure you don't do that. Make sure the R is right side up. Okay, to make sure that we have the correct size of buttonhole, we want to have the button in the foot. The way you do that is you put your thumb right down here and you push up on these corners and that opens this up. You can make a buttonhole pretty long, about an inch or inch and a half, an inch and a quarter, and it, it limits it that, to that size. Just remember with buttonholes, the longer your buttonhole, the bigger the hole in your fabric. So that's why there's kind of a limit as to how far you can make these buttons, buttonholes. So we put that button right in there, tighten that right down on there in between those little foam pieces, and that is going to determine this distance here. This little lever, we can pull that down there. This, you see that looks just like that up there. That is for making the buttonhole. What that's going to do is going to tell the machine when to stop, make that bar tack, and do the other side of the buttonhole. It's really genius how that works. Okay, so we put this under here. Now, if you have trouble getting it under there, you can lift your presser foot a little higher if you want to. You can also just kind of slide it under here, just like I did like that, and bring it forward. Lower your presser foot, and you notice the needle has somewhere to go. Now, this foot doesn't have a slit on the side to pull your uh, fabric through, so I'm going to show you a quick, easy way to do that. Put my fabric there, needle down, needle up, lift up my presser foot, pull this through, and that just take that one stitch out of your fabric and now that thread is through the presser foot and ready to go. Okay, so when you start sewing, generally you have your threads off to the side, but if I was putting buttonholes in a shirt, I would have the body of the shirt on the left and n none of the shirt on the right. So I'm going to put my thread tails over here on the right so that when I first start sewing, remember we talked about that, you want to have a little bit of pressure on your threads to kind of keep them nice and and even, not tangly at the first couple of stitches. First couple of stitches, after that, let go and let the machine do its job. So we've got this on. Now we're going to pull this lever down, make sure it's all the way behind this flange right here. Another thing about this little lever here is you don't want to accidentally push it too soon because it will stop and do a really short buttonhole or just kind of mess up the whole cycle. A buttonhole is an entire stitch. It's an entire cycle, so you don't want to touch that. So your job is to manage the rest of the garment so that like no collars or, or cuffs or anything like that get up here and accidentally push that. Okay, so now you can use interfacing, which a lot of people will do to give a nice crisp edge to their um, the front of the shirt. But I have seen nice dress shirts, my husband has one, where the fabric is folded in thirds like this and you have a third layer of fabric in the middle and that leaves, you don't have any interfacing there, you also de don't need to finish any raw edges. So I'm going to just press that down like this. You can have it either like this or like this. Well, we'll do it this way for now. And then, for lengthwise buttonholes, you want to mark your buttonhole where you want it to be. And I would recommend marking all your buttonholes at once. And then you only need to mark the beginning of that buttonhole 
because with the button in the buttonhole foot, it will sew it the correct length. So we're going to mark the beginning of that buttonhole and the center. This center line is going to be right down the middle of the buttonhole. So the zigzag stitches on one side and on the other side are going to leave a little bit of space there so you have enough room to cut the buttonhole once we're all done. Now I am using the friction pen. This pen is actually a stationary item, but it's also meant we use it in sewing because once you take, make a mark on your fabric, if you use an iron or the heat that of the friction here, you can actually erase. And, and I would do this on light colored fabrics. For one thing, the black is not going to show up. And if I ironed that, that would disappear completely. I call this more of a color change um, pen because the ink changes to a pale white. It's, but it's really nice for this. It disappears on light colored fabric really well. Now if you have thicker fabric, you're trying to move this around, the bottom of the presser foot of the um, buttonhole presser foot has these little rubber grippy things. So it may be hard to kind of move your fabric around, especially if you have thick layers. So you can lift it up a little bit higher. Now what we want to have is that longitudinal line, the long one, be right under the center little dip of the foot. I'm going to show you, I'm going to take the foot back off so you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. On the bottom of the foot, there's two little channels, one for each side of the buttonhole. And then in the center is this little dip. That's what you want to line up with this hole, with this uh, line there. I'll put that back on there, put that back down there. I'm going to take my one stitch, pull that through, pull that off, get rid of that extra thread. Okay, and then the short line here is going to be right under where the needle drops. So we want to have it about millimeter, millimeter and a half, this side of the little square. The, the buttonhole foot has like a, a rectangle where you're going to be sewing, and so on the back of that rectangle, you want your short line to be a little bit in front of that. So I'm going to just test that. Yeah, it goes right down there. Great. Okay, so make sure we have this down here. And my threads need to be off to the right, both of them. Here we go. And then also, last thing before you get started, if you're sewing your buttonholes vertically, Make sure that this edge is parallel to the edge of the foot because you could have everything lined up just right here and guess what? You're going to have a crooked buttonhole. So last thing I always like to check is make sure that's parallel right here. Then everything is in place. Hang on to that for the first couple stitches. And it takes a few stitches this way, and then it's going to march backwards. And doing a straight stitch is going to be doing that on purpose. And then it comes forward doing a zigzag stitch. When it gets to the beginning of where you started before, it does a little bit of a bar tack, marches back with that straight stitch, does a bar tack and back. Then it does a zigzag going forward. And if you look carefully, you can see my long stitch is right there in the middle. The bar tack on this is actually more like a three-step bar tack. The beep, beep, beep means it's done. So wait till you hear that beep, beep, beep before you take your foot off the pedal. That way you know that your buttonhole is completed. So as I was saying, the bar tack has a sort of a three-step rather than just two-step. It makes the, end of the ends of the buttonhole a little bit stronger. Okay, so. We can just go ahead and cut that off. We do not need to knot our threads on this because the formation of the buttonhole does that for us. So we can cut those threads right down there like that. Okay. Now next, I'm going to show you, and you always want to test sew a buttonhole just to make sure that everything works correctly and the button can go through the buttonhole okay. These buttonhole feet, 
tend to make your buttonhole a little bit longer than what you would normally need on this kind of thinner fabric. That's because if you're do doing a coat or something, then you need every bit of that buttonhole space. But because of that, I don't like to cut it all the way to the end. I'd leave maybe half a millimeter on each end and then I can always cut it larger. Kind of hard to cut something smaller, but you can cut it larger. So we take our handy dandy seam ripper here. I like to use my seam ripper with the cover on the end of the handle gives something more to hang on to. Plus, when you hang on to it or you set it down, it doesn't roll because the handle has these little lugs on it. Okay, so when you're first starting out and making buttonholes, it'd be a good idea to kind of guard the end of your buttonhole with a pin so you don't accidentally cut through that uh, carefully sewn bar tack. Again, don't start away from the edge. Just start in maybe a stitch or two like this and then cut towards the pin. Don't call, cut all the way up to the pin because you don't want to dull your seam ripper. And then what I do is I just turn it over, reposition my pin again. So here's where I've already cut. Okay, Come down here like this and cut it like that. Okay, now I'm going to test to see if the buttonhole, if I cut it long enough, yeah, it's just right. So leaving that extra little bit was just fine. Now, I don't like having these extra loops here. For one thing, if you have these, leave those loops there and you button and unbutton your buttonhole, it, the button could get caught on one of these and then you get these long uh, pulls in your fabric. So I don't like to neaten up my buttonhole. Take those off of there. Just straighten those up like that. That's how you make a buttonhole. Now on this machine we have several styles of buttonhole. This is what I did here which is your standard square end buttonhole. You also have one that has a square end, one has sort of a rounded end. This one has two rounded ends. This is more like a fine fabric, a fabric that tends to fray a little bit more easily. You might want to use that because it seals the ends of the buttonhole fabric a little bit better. These here are more decorative. This one tends to be for like sweater knits where you've got uh, a lot of extra um, yarns in there. This one here is, it's almost look like a hand stitched buttonhole. And of course, this is your keyhole buttonhole, which would be good for coats or jeans. Anytime you have a button with, instead of holes that go through the button, you have like a shank at the bottom where you need that extra room in the buttonhole to do this. And then this one here is for doing bound buttonholes. Uh, bound buttonholes is a sort of a couture uh, tailoring technique. On, you'll see that on some fine jackets where um, it's a very specific, but this will make the correct size of rectangle to make the bound buttonhole. Uh, the rest of the bound buttonhole needs to be done by hand, but that'll help you with that part of it. So that's making buttonholes. Um, if you have any comments or questions about that, you can leave it in the box below. And if this was helpful, give us a thumbs up. Stay tuned for some of our other vid videos. And we'll see you later. Bye.